And now, the Bridge North Pod with Dan Bradley and John Garbutt. Hello everyone and welcome to the Bridge North Pod. In this edition, we'll be talking to two of the cast members and the director slash producer of the Bridge North Musical Theatre Company's production of The Sound of Music. We'll also be catching up with Nick Bevan, who runs Munch, about their recent development in Takeaway Pizza. We'll also be talking with Ryan Mortier, the bassist from Under the Fridge. They're a Red Hot Chili Peppers tribute band who've played gigs in Bridge North and further afield for some time now. And if you haven't got time to listen now, don't forget you can download the MP3 from the link at the top right-hand corner of our new website, which we'll tell you more about later. The website address is www.thebridgenorthpod.co.uk. But first, a new era has begun for Albury Wells School, who have recently completed development on a new state-of-the-art sports hall. Shropshire Council spent £1.8 million from their capital budget on the development, which is possibly the biggest investment in the Bridge North area in recent years. And now we're talking with Steve Farish, who's head of PE at Albury Wells School. Stu, would you say that the amount invested in this development highlights the importance of sport in the local area? Well, I mean, first off, we're absolutely thrilled to receive this fantastic sports hall from Shropshire Council. Um, I mean, first and foremost, it's an incredible resource for our fantastic students to help them aspire, enjoy and achieve during their time at Albury Wells. But what we're hoping for as well is that we can develop our links with local sports clubs. um, And we're really looking forward to building this bond with those clubs and seeing if together we can help discover and develop some of tomorrow's sports stars within the local area. Uh, Have you seen the interest in sport rise as a result of the new hall? Well, it's yet to be opened, actually. Um, It's finished its construction in the last few weeks and um, and was handed over last week. Um, The pupils are absolutely buzzing about it. Um, But I would imagine that as soon as we get in there and start to use it full-time, they'll be absolutely over the moon because they seem chuffed at the moment. And I can't blame them. It's such a fantastic facility. Stu, would you say that the Olympics was a factor in the decision to invest in a new sports hall? Um, I'm not sure. Um, I, I think it probably, somewhere along the lines it was there with the Olympic legacy. However, I think it was our time anyway to receive this kind of facility. We've been teaching and working at the school with kind of facilities that are, have been since the school was built, kind of 1950s facilities, really. And we've done a really good job with that. And I think that the county recognised the work that we'd done and how well the pupils had worked in those facilities. And I do think that perhaps the Olympic legacy and London 2012 contributed towards their decision. Um, Stu, um, as common as it is in most school halls, would you say that there's a, a big use for it in other areas of the school as well, um, for events, etc.? Or is it just purely yeah, sports? Yeah, what we're hoping for is that we can use that as a space for really kind of showcasing what Albury Wells is about and the kind of the vision and the future of the school, which is looking really, really positive. We've struggled space-wise to really show off what the school can do, and not just the PE department, although obviously that's the, the major department that's going to benefit from this facility, but all departments really. It's a fantastic space to get local kids together from year five, from year six, and show them what Albury Wells is all about and what their time at Albury Wells could be like. Uh, Stu, um, sport is more and more significant at the moment, um, with recent statistics showing that one in three children leave primary school overweight. Um, Do you think the new sports hall will be instrumental in getting children more interested in exercising and sport in general? I sincerely hope so. I really think it will. I mean, the size and the quality of the building is absolutely unbelievable. And it's going to mean that there's more students being more active, more of the time, learning new skills in new sports, which is such an exciting time for us, really. One of the things that we're already really proud of at Albury Wells and within our PE department is the really broad and rich curriculum and opportunities that we offer the students of Albury Wells. And I think that this is just going to be able to amplify that, really, that we'll be able to offer new sports, new skills, and hopefully kind of infuse those students that perhaps may not be interested in certain aspects of traditional PE curriculum. We may now be able to get those interested. Um, Stu, which sports can the new hall cater for? Well, it's, um, it's a multi-purpose sports hall, but the main sports that we're kind of going to be pushing in there as early as we can are basketball, badminton, volleyball, those kind of sports, because there's some, they're sports that lend themselves really, really well to these large indoor spaces, which we've struggled to be able to do before. So straight away, we're going to be getting straight off the ground with those kinds of activities. However, what we're going to be doing is also looking at kind of more marginalised sports that are kind of raising interest in the background, things like dodgeball, things like chook ball, 
things like rocketball, other sports like that, that we haven't had the opportunity to do before because we just haven't had that facility. Will you, um, will you be looking to do a bit of handball as well? Because that had a huge amount of interest after the, uh, after the Olympic Games. Absolutely. We've had loads of students asking about handball. We've actually already had a staff group as well that are interested in playing. And now, again, we've got that facility that we'll be able to do that. Stu, with this fantastic investment that Aubrey Wells now has, um, will the hall be available to hire outside of school hours in the future? Yeah, we certainly hope so. Um, I mean, first and foremost, it's an incredible resource for our fantastic students at Aubrey Wells. Um, to help them aspire and enjoy and achieve during their time. But we also want to develop our links with those local clubs. So we are going to be hosting um, an open evening for local clubs to come and view the facilities and see what they think of them and the changing rooms and if it's something that perhaps they want to let out of an evening or perhaps at a weekend. And that open evening is going to be on Friday the 8th of February from 4 till 6 p.m. It's just a walk-in, walk-out, stay as long as you like, come and talk to the staff, come and ask some questions about the letting. Um, and that's one of the ways that we're really hoping that we can develop some strong links with some local clubs and make real good use of this facility. Stu, do you have any final thoughts to mention? Um, just how pleased I am with the build. I'm so grateful to Shropshire Council and the project manager, Martin Ellis, as well as the contractors who've built the sports hall for us, Tom Linton's, and their site manager Pete Dunn, how efficient they've been and how, um, how they've kept us as involved as they have in every step of the way to help us create a facility that suits the needs of ours and our students really well and it just complements our curriculum and our school. How long has it actually taken to develop? It's taken six, it's taken six months to build, um, however the planning has been in place now for kind of a year and a half, two years, something like that, but the actual construction phase has taken about six months. They've worked at a, fun, a phenomenal rate and kept involved all the way throughout. They've allowed school groups to come on in and have tours at different stages. So it's really been a fantastic partnership, and I just wanted to kind of use this moment to express my gratitude to the council and to Tom Linton for that. Thank you for talking to us, Stu. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks Thank you. a lot. So, John, have you heard that there's a new pizza place in town? I haven't, no. I'd be intrigued to know more. Well, Munch have been doing sandwiches for quite a while now, um, and they've just recently branched off into pizzas. Lois and I caught up with Nick Bevan to find out more. Uh, what made you guys branch out into pizza making exactly? Uh, it's, I suppose, that Bridge North didn't have a pizza delivery service anymore, and being a fan of pizza and being a bit lazy, I like having it delivered, so we thought we'd just bring it back to the town. So has it been well received? Uh, so far, so good. We had a bit of a mad weekend with the deliveries. And it's taken off. We see some good positive comments coming through on Facebook, so all good at the minute. Didn't you guys have a flood on your launch day? Yes, unfortunately we did. <laughs> had a frozen pipe burst in the shop and I had to shut the shop in the day. But luckily, with the help of my staff and my family, I managed to get it sorted in time. Is there a wide selection on the menu? Yeah, well, we do everything. We do vegetarian, seafood and your normal meats. Um, where do you source your ingredients? Uh, we try and source as local as possible. We use a lot of the indoor market, uh, Kev's fruit and veg for our peppers and tomatoes and fresh stuff. Some of our meat comes from Craig Finch, the indoor market, and uh, sauces and stuff, and that comes from pennies. Are they all handmade? Yes, they all. They're all handmade. Kev makes the dough himself. He's his been as he's a Whitney. So he's fully qualified for that. Hello, Kev. All right, mate. <laughs> is the focus uh, primarily pizza now, uh, or is it a balance between the sandwiches that you previously did? Uh, primarily it's pizzas at the minute, because obviously it's a new thing, so everyone's wanting to try it at the minute. And January, February is a quiet month for sandwiches anyway, so it's just the pizzas at the minute. Uh, when's your busiest time? Uh, it's Friday, Saturday night, really, at the minute. But obviously, we've only been open a week so far, so but those are proving the busiest times at the minute. Uh, are you guys open quite late? Do you get any latecomers? Oh, we only open till 10 because of our licensing on those premises, but we do get late people trying to come in. Uh, so, Nick, you only recently took over Munch last year, if I'm correct. Uh, tell us a bit about your background. Uh, where were you before Munch? Uh, before I took over Munch, I was working at the Shakespeare, which is just over the road, so I don't like to move too far. And I've always been working in pubs and bars and abroad before now. Uh, we say it's a, a difficult business to take on. Yeah, very difficult, especially in this climate, in this town. People don't want to spend the money. So it's hard, but we're getting there. So for all the listeners um, who might be feeling a bit peckish this evening, how do we order? Uh, you can phone us on 764800. Uh, we don't deliver on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. We're closed Mondays. But you can always, or you can just pop in and give us, come and see us, or we'll deliver it to you. Thank you, Nick, for talking to us. Local Arts. 
Uh, some of you may be aware that Bridge North Musical Theatre Company uh, put on a show every February. They're currently in their pre-show preparations. Myself and Dan caught up with two of the cast members on Sunday to see how they were getting on. So we're here with Saskia Fuchs and Ellie Farrington who are rehearsing for Bridge North Musical Theatre Company's upcoming production of The Sound of Music. Which parts are you both playing? I'm playing Maria. And I'm playing Liesl. How are the rehearsals going? Um, really well. Act one's looking good, act two needs a little bit of tidying up, but act one's looking pretty fab. <laughs> How long have you been preparing for the show exactly? Since September. We got cast in September, I've been doing it ever since. And how did you both get involved with the musical theatre company? Um, my granddad was involved in the theatre company when he was younger and then I was in BSA, which is the junior version. So I started there and then came through the audition process like that. How easy is it for other people to get involved? It's quite easy. I taught at the Stage Academy and just heard of the show and loved the show. So I thought, oh, I'll give it a go and join. And I think everyone's welcome. They're always welcoming new people. And it's if you've got a love of musical theatre, then... They're welcoming me with open arms. Are, are all the cast members local? Um, how, how far afield do, do people travel to come here? Quite far afield. I mean, Bridge North is quite a, a sort of central town with a lot of villages. So we get as far as Shrewsbury, we get people from Telford. A lot of the kids aren't local kids, but most of the people are local. But I think it doesn't really matter. The musical theatre company did Beauty and the Beast last year, which involved quite a lot of the kids from BSA. Um, the Sound of Music involves some of the younger cast members as well. How are they getting on with the step up to the larger scale show? Really well. Um, as I'm playing Lisa, I've had quite a lot to do with the children and their concentration and their determination has had to be pretty high, hasn't it? Just to really, you know, because they've, they've got to show how good they are and how, like, how strict the captain would have been. So, yeah, they're doing well. Uh, the Society's been running for 61 years now. Um, some people have been involved for quite long periods of time who are the stalwarts of the company mike james mary james john james um mary swales uh, there's a fair few there's a little clump that have all been here a fair while when is the performance exactly for the full show it is <coughs> excuse me february half term from the 19th to the 23rd so, so because it's not long now could you tell us a bit more about the run-up and preparations you're going to have to go through now between now and the well, as of today, we are on our first long rehearsal. We've all bought snacks. It's a full run through today. I saw you running through that. Is it quite difficult to run through without props and everything? Cause it's a lot of imagination is needed <laughs> and a lot of running around and pretending. But it's, it's good. It helps to run through and I think it helps the kids a lot as well. But they get to see what it would feel like in the full run through of the show. Does it get a bit confusing then? I'm Very. <laughs> Especially when you've got two teams of kids and we're having to do every number twice. Once for red team, once for blue team. <laughs> There's supposed to be a table there. <laughs> As a member of the stage crew, I do notice that when you set it all up and they all come on stage, they all go, how do, how do, I, how do I stand next to this and look like I've, I'm used to it? Resting <laughs> against a table that's not even there. Yeah. <laughs> but this is too low for how I've been leaning on it. This, this, doesn't, <laughs> this doesn't make sense. Um, what can we ex expect in this production? Better than the West End. Amazing things. It's very good value for money. A lot of people, I think, when they think of local amateur dramatics, got closed brackets, it's um, people expect a s small little play, but there's a lot of hard work and a lot of determination goes into it, and it's a night out of the theatre, it's better than travelling down to London. I also think that differently to Beauty and the Beast, this holds the factor of having some beautiful harmonies, some very raw emotional acting, lots of touching moments, rather than having the big cheesy Disney feel to it. Uh, you mentioned it's good value for money. How much are the tickets? It is £14 for adults and £10 for children. Uh, based on your ticket sales last year, should people uh, get, in, get in quickly? Definitely. Saturday's <laughs> sold out already. Saturday night. <coughs> Saturday matinee is still available, but Saturday night's <coughs> sold out already and they're going fast. So yeah, get your tickets. Have the Bridgewater Musical Theatre Company got a website or a Facebook page? Facebook page and website. It's pretty easy. If you type into Google... Bridge North Musical Theatre Company, the website will come up and on Facebook do the same and the group will come up. 
And there's lots of information put on the Facebook page almost weekly, really, isn't there, about what's going on and different rehearsal pitches and stuff. So Embarrassing pictures at that. <laughs> Well, Saskia and Ellie, it's been a pleasure talking to you on the yeah. British North Pod. Thank you very much. We'd better wrap Thank up because Mike, Mike's leaning against the bookshelf. <laughs> Come Look, see Looking, us, looking really like good. he wants his cast members back. <laughs> cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. So later on in the day, we had the privilege of catching up with Mike James, the producer and director, to find out his thoughts on how it had all gone. We've caught you just after your run-through. How's it going? It went very well, actually, yeah. It was the first run-through that we've done, and uh, it seemed to come together with not too many hitches. So, uh, so yeah, it's going well, thanks. Uh, when and how did you get involved with the theatre company? Oh, I've been involved more years than I care to remember, probably, <laughs> on stage since I was seven. Um, so I've done quite a number of shows with them actually performing, and then um, I actually co-directed a show with my dad, um, oh probably 15, 20 years ago, and, and then have directed on my own for the past uh, three or four years. Th this year, like last year, incorporates some younger members, um, but this year they're in sort of more prominent roles. Uh, how impressed are you with them and with how they're coping with the, with the step up? Yeah, extremely impressed. Um, we, we, we had open auditions because we knew we had to get two sets of children, um, age ranging between six and 18, and uh, we decided to do some open auditions we had about 75 children turn up um, and flew through a series of what was in the end four audition stages uh, we managed to pick two groups of six children uh, with Liesl being the part that's played on both both uh, with both groups so uh, very impressed the standard of the children is very high they feature very prominently in this show uh, something that we wanted to carry on with after doing Beauty and the Beast um, to appeal to you know a younger audience. Is it quite a longer audition process then? Is there... It was, yeah. It was. Uh, we did it in the summer. Um, we, we did it prior to our main auditions uh, because we knew we'd get a lot of response from the children, and uh, so we did it over over four different audition days. So the Sound of Music, uh, your upcoming production. Where can people get tickets from? They get tickets from the Bridge North Sports and Leisure Centre where we're performing. Uh, we actually turn the sports hall into a theatre, uh, which is uh, quite a feat actually because we do that over, over two or three days. So one, one Saturday afternoon it's a badminton hall and then by the time we perform on the Monday it's a theatre. So that's when they, they can get the tickets, tickets available now. Although I have to say I've just heard from our chairman they are selling fast and we're over 80% capacity. Um, it's a slightly tongue-in-cheek one. Um, what are your thoughts on how Wolves are doing at the moment? Because I know you're a season <laughs> ticket holder. I am, yes, and uh, poorly, I would say, is the answer to that, poorly. But uh, we've got a new manager now who seems to be a bit more enthusiastic than the last one. Um, I think the, the players will understand his methods a bit more. He's certainly making them work harder. And there was some signs of improvement for the first half on Saturday against Blackpool, but uh, we had a stupid mistake, let a goal in, and uh, second half we were poor. So let's hope... Um, the sound of music performs better than walls do at the moment which i'm sure it will do i'm, I'm very sure it will do um the only thing we can do now is wish you luck for the show week thank you very much thank you for giving a bit of your time to talk to us no problem at all thanks very much guys. thank you very much mike cheers, cheers. The Bridge North Pod. So, John, there's been exciting developments within the Bridge North Pod, hasn't there? Yes, all part of our 2013 revamp. We're releasing all of our back catalogue of content from 2012, right back to when we launched at the end of November. You can access it all now. Uh, the best bits are online at www.thebridgenorthpod.co.uk. You can also find the most recent podcast on the homepage of the website itself. You can also download the latest episode from the top right-hand corner link. Download this week's episode. And Lois is our new webmistress who will be bringing you up-to-date news articles of the latest news in Bridge North. You'll be able to find all the latest articles 
under Bridge North Latest. Just scroll down on our homepage. Live music. Now we're talking with Ryan Mortier, the bassist from Under the Fridge. So, so Ryan, where did Under the Fridge begin? How did you guys start out together? Basically, it was an idea. Um, it was an idea I had probably well over ten years ago, but uh, I, I struggled to kind of find the musicians to do it. I had a drummer who was interested, but but could never find singers and guitarists. We started up uh, it was about three years ago now, and it, it was Ben who came up with the idea. Sort of as we were doing a, a nice week in Hill Walk. Um, he suggested we, we try and find some musicians and he'd take on the vocal part. So um, at the time, we used uh, Tim and Leighton from Shebang um, and got the project started, built it up. Um, Tim kind of discovered it wasn't for him, so we we, um, we took on Jimmy and, and ever since then, you know, it's been cool for us. Did it uh, take quite a lot of studying to get the act right at the time? Because being a tribute band, I imagine it's quite a lot of work to deliver the correct um, act on stage. Yeah, I, I guess so. It's, um, well, I mean, for me, I've been playing the songs for years anyway. Um, so it was just, just a case of making sure I knew exactly what I was doing and, and getting those those bass lines absolutely right and the solos absolutely right so that pretty much took took up hours of my time in my bedroom trying to trying to make sure that was all okay but Ben's um, you know sort of a lot of history and acting and stuff so so learning his, his words and taking on, on the role as Anthony I suppose was, was kind of second nature to him with his training so that, that was pretty quick for Ben to do um, and Leighton's just an amazing drummer and he'll, he'll just pick up you know, pretty much anything quick. And uh, Jimmy as well is an amazing guitarist. So Ryan, have Under the Fridge got any upcoming gigs in Bridge North? Yeah, we've got a, a local gig in Bridge North at a place called Hen and Chickens on the 8th of February. So Ryan, um, where can our listeners find out more about Under the Fridge? Uh, well, basically, we've it's mainly a Facebook page. You can, uh, you can go into Facebook and just type in Under the Fridge. And it'll be, uh, it'll be the first thing that comes up. The Bridge North Pod with Dan Bradley and John Garbutt. This is Under the Bridge with our cover of By the Way. Standing loud to see the short now. There's a light on heavy glow. By the way, I tried to say I'd be there. Wait till Yeah. 
Thank you very much for talking to us, Ryan. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Okay, dude. So we'd like to thank you for listening to this edition of the Bridge North Pod. We'd like to thank Stu Farish for talking to us about the new sports hall at Albury Wells. We'd also like to thank Nick Bevan from Munch Pizza Bridge North for talking to us. We'd also like to thank Saskia, Ellie and Mike from Bridge North Musical Theatre Company for talking to us about their upcoming production of The Sound of Music. And we'd also like to thank the rest of the cast and production team who accommodated us last Sunday. That's it for this edition of the Bridge North Pod. Don't forget to like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash thebridgenorthpod. And don't forget to check out the new website. That's www.thebridgenorthpod.co.uk. Thank you for listening.